Hi, this is Ruthie Cohen Joyner with Your Tapping Journey, and I have Alina Frank with me here today with tapyourpower.net. We are both EFT practitioners and matrix reimprinting practitioners, but Alina is also a master trainer of trainers in EFT and a matrix reimprinting trainer, and also the facilitator and director of Learning to Find Love, which is a course for single women. And I've trained with Alina and thought it would be fabulous to have her here with us today to talk about the intersection of sex and weight, how the two have a lot to do with each other. So Alina, thank you very much for being here with me today. Thanks for having me, Ruthie. I look, I look forward to exploring uh, these topics with you. All right. Thank you so much. So I uh, wanted to know if you could talk a little bit about your work with sex and sexuality, and I wanted to mention real quickly, this is Alina's book, which I know you're going to see it backwards, but How to Want Sex Again by Alina. Um, a little bit about your work with sex and sexual trauma and how that affects women and eating and weight issues. Yeah, yeah. So um, I like to use the term sexual injury. Okay. Um, because I think that a lot of women can relate to the word sexual injury. I think that when we say it's, it's sexual trauma, it goes to whatever they think a trauma, you know, constitutes, and they may not be understanding that, uh, that even, even the kinds of things that we see so much of these days with the, all the sexual harassment stuff that's come out. Right. Um, I, I think that that falls under the category of sexual injury. And so instead of having, you know, comparing wounds like, oh, my wound is, is bigger than yours or yours isn't as big or you only got a comment, you got a touch and you were, you know, I just like to say it's all, it's all injury. It's all a wound. It's all, it's all sexual injury. Um, so this is this is a fascinating topic. It really, really is. And I think that you that most people do not have any clue. I mean, now it's it's we're living in amazing times. Like right now, we're finally getting a little glimpse of just how pervasive this problem is. Absolutely. And it's I think that's all that's all good. I think it empowers women to speak up and to talk about it and process it and work on it finally, where they may have just said, oh, it's me, I'm alone, uh, you know, I should just get over it and things like that. I, I, it's, 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 it's so the way that I really heard about this was I started my EFT practice as many people do and then it's like, how often am I going to hear this similar story about someone that has been, you know, wounded in this way? And I, and it wasn't until I really got comfortable with myself and asking the question that I really started to see that it impacted most, a oh, vast majority of my clients. And so I will ask that of EFT practitioners is first, you know, how, how many of you are actually working with these things all the time, especially in the area when you, you, you work with women on weight release or weight loss or body image and stuff like that? How often are you getting there? And for those of you that aren't seeing it, how much of this is a reflection of your comfort in approaching the topic to begin with so once you get comfortable you're going to get comfortable asking the question and until you don't you're going to feel resistance to going there and the more you go there you're going to see more of it um so a wonderful piece of uh, of sort of uh science history is the Felitti study that had to do with, uh, so, so Felitti was a doctor working in the Kaiser Permanente system and they were running an obesity clinic and they were doing these trials like let's really try to help people with this issue. It's, a, it, it's an epidemic in our country and we need to get to the root of this. So 
they were running this um, obesity clinic and they found that there were people that were dropping out of the out of the program and when they went and looked at the data they saw that the people that were losing the most weight the people that were losing the most weight were the ones dropping out of the program Logically, that doesn't make any sense. If they're with the program and they're losing weight, you would think that they would want to keep going. And instead, they were dropping out left, right, and center. Yeah. So, so Felitti decided, okay, we need to find out what is at the root of this. And he asked the question, right? So that's how things get, when you're comfortable enough asking the question. In, in this, in this uh, situation, though, I almost feel like it was one of those, you know, um, downloads, you know, or something that had him ask the wrong question. So in his survey, asking these people why they had dropped out of the program, one of the questions was, at what age did you become sexually active? And he slipped up and he made the mistake that day in his office and said, how, how much did you weigh when you became sexually active? Hmm. And that had a woman answer, I was 50 pounds. And he said, what, what does that, what does that mean? Oh, I think I asked it incorrectly. And she said, no, there was, in, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a victim of incest. So he said, okay, that's interesting. I'm going to now ask deeper questions about, is there sexual injuries or sexual trauma? Or did you have incest? Things like that in your background. And wow, lo and behold, most of them did. And so he thought, is this a, is, why haven't we ever seen this? And it's because they weren't asking the right questions. Right. And so to me, that story indicates that it, it makes the, it makes what some of us already have sensed, even if, even if you have nothing to do with the healing arts at all, you have a sense that people pack on weight for protection. Yes. And so now <clears throat> this is confirming what some of us already sense and, and sort of felt to be true. I think that many um, women, if you ask them why they have extra weight, I, and I'm talking about probably to the level of obesity, why do you feel you have the weight? Uh, they will tell you it's, it makes me feel safe. It gives me, it gives me padding against the world. It gives me a shield. It gives me armor. I've heard all of those. And so, well, what is it that you don't feel safe about? And again, it, because it's the body, it's the safety of the body. It's not the safety of some intellectual thing or a belief or anything else. It is about the body. And the place where, that feels very threatening is, you know, around sex. Yeah, I have to share a personal story about that. And this is relatively recent. Um, in 2012, 2013, I lost about 20 pounds. And one day I was walking my dog in my neighborhood and a man that I did not know pulled up to me in his car and he said, Hey, you're looking really good. And I did not put two and two together until months later that that is when I stopped losing weight. Wow. And you know, I'm an adult, I'm married and I did not realize that I was so threatened by this one comment that that it freaked me out and i stopped losing weight so i mean yeah. even when you think you're conscious uh because i've been doing this kind of work you yeah know, for years i yeah. was blown away to realize how i was affected by that so. yeah those are fascinating questions to ask like what made you stop losing weight what yeah. was happening when you stopped losing weight when was the last time you got n near your goal weight or at your goal weight? What happened? Yeah. There's always a good, a, a good <laughs> indication of what could have tripped that up. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So that, that's part of the self-sabotage that happens um, is that I, I am, it's, it's, and for some, it's really not conscious. Right. Uh, I, for some, it's like, I, I don't know why I can't lose weight. And so we'll explore those, like, what could it be? What, is there any part of you that doesn't feel comfortable? Imagine yourself being at your goal weight. Does that feel great? And that's when it's like, 
oh my gosh, no, I actually, it doesn't, it feels really scary. So, um, so I think that's one of the, you know, that, that for sure is, is there the safety issue. And then there are, you know, subtle things, subtle things. And, and I, I want to tell all the women that are watching this, that what I hear from men, men who just, and, and I don't work with a lot of men in my practice. These are just like cocktail conversations, like cocktail party conversations or networking things, or somebody asked me, what do you do? Um, you know, one of the things that I hear from guys so often is, I wish my wife were more comfortable in this arena. And I, I want the women to, to, that are watching this to know that, um, You've got to work on releasing the stuff that you have about your body and about being sexual um, because most of the guys out there, your partners don't care. What they care about is that it's preventing you from really feeling good about yourself. They hear comments that are constantly made and it hurts them. It really hurts them. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I want to, I want to add one other thing along those lines that some of what I've heard sometimes when people talk about losing weight or they've started losing weight is they're afraid of their own sexuality there. I've heard comments like, well, I'm afraid I'll leave my husband or I'm afraid of what I'll do or what I'll be. Or, you know, if I go out to the bars after I lose weight. So I totally agree yeah. with women needing to explore our own sexuality and get comfortable with our bodies and our sexuality and, you know, in whatever way, shape or form. Absolutely. And I, and, and I think that you can, it, yeah. Wow. You just, you just brought up so much and I had this flood of like all these case studies. So I'm, I'm, rem, I'm remembering a woman who absolutely uh, did not feel comfortable losing weight for exactly the reason that you said. And I said to her, did, were you sexually attracted to your husband before you got married? And the answer almost always is no, not really. And so wow. this is just a symptom of that. Again, it's it. So chemistry to me in, a, in an attract, in a, when you're talking about attraction for another person, the chemistry part of it, the part that you can't, that it doesn't make any sense. Like, boy, I, I'm hot for this guy and he's bald and I've never been attracted to bald men. There's something energetic about the chemistry part and it has to do with the body, the body and this like, oh, and you feel it, right? You feel it in all kinds of places. Yeah. Well, if you shut that down, it's gonna show up in the body. And one of the ways it shows up in the body is extra weight or emotional eating or um, obsessive exercise I've seen. So it shows up in all various ways having to do with the body again. And that that's really interesting. So, I, so working on that and being comfortable with your sexuality at any weight is really important. I mean, I could go on to tell you that your biological weight, your biological age decreases by seven years if you have orgasms regularly. So you'll, you'll, your body will be younger by seven years if you have regular orgasms. It'll and lower what your blood pressure. constitutes regular? I'm just curious. I think that the study said something like once a week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> and so, um, so uh, lowering blood pressure, regulating cholesterol, regulating your hormones. So I hear uh, from a lot of women like, oh, I went through menopause and that's it. Or I'm perimenopausal and I have all of these things that are happening with my body. You want to regulate those hormones. Guess what you can do? Have mm. sex find a way, maybe it's not going to be exactly the same way as when you had sex in your 20s, um, you're going to have to explore that and explore, exploring that and learning about your body and the way your body has changed throughout um, now as you're aging. All of that requires you to be comfortable with your body. And so, I mean, I think things like EFT and matrix room printing are really good for that. Absolutely. So I'm curious what you're talking about is, is what we may be dealing with in our 40s, 50s, 60s. When you're working with women on their sexuality, older women, are you often doing matrix work on the early um, 
sexual injury, whether that be childhood abuse or teenage, um, I, a lot of people that feel um, embarrassed about their promiscuous, I can't get that out, promiscuousness. Promiscuity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank yeah, you. For sure. Um, yeah. For the, uh, that they were promiscuous, that um, that things that sexual injury happened. Um, a one that I find uh, it's it's pretty common is that I I was pressured into having sex too soon, mm -hmm. um, and then the guilt around that and the shame and all of that. Um, so yeah, all of that. Um, self-pleasuring uh that that i've i it's amazing especially as you know like the stuff that you get with matrix that is pre-verbal mm -hmm. i mean so many women had the experience of touching themselves where you know they got slapped in the hand or they were rubbing up against the 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 rails of the crib i mean i have a lot of clients that have had that experience because it felt good they did it and yeah. the and you know well intentioned as as that last generation was they they really their they, their words and the energy behind the words of no dirty girl bad girl we don't do that we don't touch ourselves all of that uh, contributes to our shutting down absolutely so i totally agree so have you found alina when you work with women on their sexuality that it also heals their body image and weight issues or issues with food just be even when you're just focusing on the sex or yeah sexuality? oh yeah yeah for sure because that because at the root that's why they don't feel safe and then when they do feel safe it's almost as a natural extension that weight you know the weight drops off now i will say that I feel that it's important to not to to not just rely on EFT as sort of like the next fad or or magic pill or um, you know lose twenty pounds in twenty four hours by you know listening to this hypnosis tape or whatever. I think that that it comes part and parcel with doing work uh in in behavior change and lifestyle modification and all of that kind of stuff um so when someone talks to me about like well, what do i do for my clients that want to lose weight i say well many there are many things that are contributing to it so they're they're eating emotionally why are they eating emotionally help to resolve that find though there might be some some sexual injury that needs to be addressed um, ask them what doesn't feel safe about losing weight, but also come up with a plan. And it is really, in this work is so beautiful because it's client led. Right. Um, so you ask them to come up with some kind of behavior change, um, what program works best for them, what would help them. For one person, it's a trainer. For another person, it's walking with friends. For someone else, it's taking a dance class. So it, have your client come up with a strategy and a plan, and then when they're doing well, great, support that work. If they don't meet those goals, if they don't aren't able to achieve walking three times a week, then that's a reason to explore what could be preventing you from doing that, which goes back to the safety stuff. Right, right, and the sabotaging to stay safe. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly, exactly. Totally agree, cool, yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, do you have any specific t stories that you want to share or any particular client that you remember that, um, and it's not necessarily about weight to me. I don't really care what size people are. It's more about feeling good in your body and having a relationship with food that you're comfortable with. That yeah. You've seen that happen with the, with the, with the sexual um, injury work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 rem I'm remembering. Uh, so Sometimes there are complex, uh, complex cases where you are working with someone for a per a long period of time. That mm -hmm. happens. I don't want to. I don't want to again make have it give the implication that this is like a, you know, boom, you're done. You're you right. know, it's resolved. Right. I don't want people coming away thinking that. But there are some amazing stories. Like I had a, I had a, uh, a, a person that I met as a, at a presentation come up to me and tell me that she had lost 30, no, she lost over a hundred pounds. Wow. 
wow. doing self tapping while she was grocery shopping. And that's all she did. Interesting. <laughs> so that happens. That happens. But yes, uh, specifically around sexual injury, there was um, a client that I that I helped, and this is this is really fascinating. It's all about your perception more than it. I, I'm and again, I'm not talking about obesity. I'm not talking about someone that has medical issues because of their weight. I I but. Think about the friends that you or relatives that you have in your life that are always making constant um, references to food or to their bodies. And, and how many of those comments? Yes, belittling comments. And how many of those do you look at and you say, I don't see anything wrong with their weight? So it's a head thing, it's a mind thing, it's a perception thing, not necessarily that they are overweight. Right. Um, so I, I've helped a number of people like, like that, that were just so, you, so focused on their eating that they weren't living. So focused on what is this going to do to me that they can't enjoy their life? You know, I, I'm remembering um, like a mindfulness exercise that was really popular like 20 years ago where um, the presenter would have you eat a raisin. Have you ever done oh, that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> I think I, I think I, we talked about that, that, that. You like doing that. It's, it's no, fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when, you, when you have someone actually taste a small raisin and really get into what that feels like versus emotional eating and yeah. um, and and some of the stuff that happens culturally where I, you know I sent you something this morning about who is benefiting when you are attacking yourself and telling you that you that you're telling yourself that you're not good enough exactly the way that you are so I had a client that we worked on why don't you feel good enough and of course that led to um, some sexual injury that happened to her when she was five years old and it had to do with playing doctor mm -hmm. and it had to do with um, getting caught playing doctor and it was pretty innocuous stuff I mean they weren't touching each other they were like taking their clothes off you know sitting next to each other and saying we're making a baby and like and that was that was as far as it was probably going to go, but mom came in, and then this whole thing happened. So we went back and we resolved that, and um, and her blocks around becoming sexual again, and um, she had had a breakup, and that had triggered all of this. And then, um, yeah, as a natural result of that, she lost weight without us even working on the weight stuff. So that yeah. was uh, really interesting to me. Yeah. So I want to go back to what you said a minute ago. Um, who's benefiting from us feeling bad about our bodies? I mean, I can think the beauty industry and et cetera, et cetera. So who pops exactly. into your mind when you think about that? Yeah, that's what I, that's what I think about. So um, in the, in the, in the learning to find love course, we talk about something called channel cloggers and that is anything that makes you feel less than optimistic about your chances of attracting a partner and um, I think we can apply the same thing for channel blockers for what makes you feel not good enough and right. so so while you're going through this process of of transforming um your relationship with food or relationship with your body or really trying to become se a sexual being again then you might want to like think about who who or what is is making me feel less than good about myself so uh in in the course we suggest you know if if you regularly buy women's magazines you know don't do that <laughs> for a while um maybe there's someone in your life that you can actually say you know this is a big one um you can tell the people in your life you know every time you make a comment about my weight it really hurts me. So we, we're not used to getting into that level of conversation with our family. We just take it. 
And yes. what do we do instead? We eat more. And Absolutely. so, yeah, so, so um, just like in, in the Learn to Find Love course, we say, have a conversation with your well-intentioned family member who's saying these things about, you know, you, you, you really would be better off if you, whatever, did X, Y, Z, go on this dating site or, you know, give up already, buy a cat. You know, I've heard my, somebody oh. tell a client of mine, right? So, um, so have that conversation and you could use EFT and some of these other tools to get you feeling comfortable having that conversation because most, most of our friends and relatives, if they truly are, um, well-intentioned people just a little you know whatever have their own issues around it is really what it is then um then you having an ominous conversation and say i know that you're really support you're, you're a supportive person and i really appreciate you for for what you're trying to do for me but when you make comments like that it just makes me feel bad about myself and i'm really trying that now to release some of this and so you would be really helping me a great deal more by just not saying anything and um and you surprised sometimes you really get good good results from just having an honest conversation with people totally agree and i think using some future re-imprinting to really see this happening in the way yeah. it could happen yes. but i have to admit i have clients who have mothers who are you know the clients might be in their 50s or 60s so the moms are in their 80s or 90s or whatever and I was like well she's never gonna change and yeah. every time she sees me she tells me well if you would just lose 20 yes. pounds whatever yes. whatever then blah 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 I'm like, oh. you know and, I, I mean I understand yeah. the powerlessness of that but yeah you know yeah. feeling feeling good in your body <laughs> being a sexual person all of that has absolutely nothing to do with weight. We talked about this before we came on. So it has yeah. nothing to do with weight. And I know that I have felt sexy being larger and I have felt completely shut down from my, my, who I am sexually when I was at my thinnest ever in my life. And so I think that it, it is, it is, a, it is really a state of mind. When I started working on releasing anything from having me feel good about myself and, um, and feeling attractive and sexy and really loving myself, um, it was like a, I, I had like a, um, a shining, like, I don't know, neon sign saying I'm available. Even before I made a public announcement that I was ending my marriage, I, I all of a sudden started attracting attention. And so, yeah, there is an energetic to that. Yeah. And it's only feeling not safe for you because of past experiences. Um, I And so... If, if, if even just hearing me say this to some of your audience is like you're feeling stirred up, by all means, that's a, that's a place to explore. Absolutely. Yes. Feel free to tap during this if you need to. <laughs> yes. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And one other place when you were talking about who's benefiting from this is the whole corporate world and how women, you know, the glass ceiling. Well, the glass ceiling for women who are larger is even lower than right. it is for women who have the right body type and the right look. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I remember a video from the, I think it was from the 80s, because it was, what I had was a, um, what was before the VHSs or the, I guess it was a VHS. A but, VHS or beta I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there was um, a, a scene, and I wish I could remember, it was a documentary about eating disorders and weight and stuff from the 80s where there's a scene of a woman in a business suit and she's carrying a briefcase, but the briefcase is actually a um, mannequin. And the idea is that you have to have this body type in order to walk into corporate America. And that really stuck with me, however, 30 years later or whatever, wow. because it was very much about, don't think you're going to ever get higher without wow. the right body type and the right look. And, you know, whatever favors are expected along the way, right? I mean, we're not going to oh, go yeah. there right now, but that's a whole, you know, into the Me Too thing and all that. So Sure, sure. Very yeah. powerful. Anything else you want to add about sexuality and weight before we bring this to a close? Yeah, I would say that it 
love your body and learn ways to love your body, it's the only one you have, <laughs> right? It's right. the only one you have. And if you believe in past lives, yeah, but you'll never have this body. Your body is screaming for attention and, and love from you. Absolutely. It absolutely is. And so the more love, I mean, can you imagine, can you, you can, you can imagine all of the various ways that your body is going to break down on you if all you're sending it is messages of, I hate you, 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 I hate you. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not good. I would love you if you were 10 pounds lighter. I would love you even more if you were 20 pounds lighter. What's wrong with you, stomach? Why are you protruding? What's wrong with you, backside, because you're too big and I hate you? Right. Um, Imagine, you, I mean, you can think about those cells that are listening. They're listening to you. Absolutely. And so really it behooves you to really get down and, and, and just heal this stuff. Um, and, you know, I think sex is one way of, feel, of getting to the place where you feel like, yeah, I'm healed enough to really experience my body in its greatest pleasure. Uh, but there are lots of different things that'll happen. Your, you, you, your relationships will benefit. Your, the, your, your ability to go out into the world and therefore follow your dreams and make more money and, and be successful at what you do. And so, and then I'll throw in their health stuff i mean why wouldn't you want to work on this stuff yeah and i think about all the energy you would have available to give your gifts to the world if you weren't wasting time getting on the scale every morning and letting it tell you how to feel i mean it's just exactly the crazy things we do and it, it really is a cultural thing that we've been trained to do this you know most men, yes, there are some now, but most men don't have this obsession and don't spend their lives worrying about what they look like in their pants and et cetera, et cetera. So. Yeah. The other thing I want to leave you with is because I know that we're both mothers mm -hmm. and um, I want you to think about if not for you, then what kind of example are you leaving the next generation about all of this Absolutely. and because I think they're actually there's some they're 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 so much wiser and 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 I know my kids are they they have a sensitivity to this stuff that I never had growing up um, but there's a, there's also this big majority of of girls out there that are feeling it that they are not good enough that um that they're killing themselves yeah. as a result and so let's let's stop doing that let's let's be the role models we want to be for the next generations that are coming along and you know that have issues around this absolutely totally agree with that thank you so much for sharing that alina so in closing, I do want to ask you if people want to know more about your work or where to find you. Do you want to share anything about anything you may be having coming up soon that people might be interested in? Sure. So we uh, right now, my current passion is this learn to learning to find love dot com and uh, and also helping uh, pra skill practitioners help them develop their skills and things like that and do trainings. So EFT tapping training dot com. Thank you very much. And is there anything, last thing you want to share as far as anything you're excited about coming up in your personal life? Personal life? Yeah, are you guys okay. getting ready to do anything fun and exciting? Yeah, we are going to Italy. Nice. And, um, and so we are, we're planning out, I'm, I'm planning out our trip. And also we are, I'm trying to learn a little Italian before I get there. And, um, and I, and, and it's funny cause, uh, it, it just feels like I should reread, eat, pray, love as part of that, you know, going to Italy. And, um, and so I, yeah, I, I, it's just a juicy thing that's happening right now that we, we said we would get there eventually and we happen to be, ha we have to go to Europe um, in January and thought, okay, we'll just tie this in. So that's Beautiful. happening. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sounds awesome. great. Yes. Well, thank you so much for your time and thank you everyone. And like Alina said, her website, or she has many, but tapyourpower.net and mine is yourtappingjourney.com. And thank you so much for listening.